In this video, we are going to talk about how to CAD with pneumatics. Now, first off, I guess we're going to start with what a pneumatic is. Okay, there's two types of pneumatics. There's either the double acting cylinder and the single acting cylinder. Okay, both of these can be found on the VEX website. All right. We have kit one for single acting and kit two for double acting cylinders. The difference between a single acting cylinder and a double acting cylinder is the way you can control air. For the single acting cylinder, okay, you only have one air hole in the bottom, and there's a spring that will pull the piston back into place. However, the spring is usually considered quite weak, and so you usually want to uh, strengthen the strength of that spring by using rubber bands to tension the force of the piston coming back in. With a double uh, acting pneumatic cylinder, okay, we have two of these air holes. So you can either pump in air into this hole or that hole, forcing this piston either down or out, or up, I guess, right? And so, yeah, how this actually looks like on the inside, I guess I will show you by just cutting it open half. Okay, if I extrude this way, you can see on the inside, right, that we have uh, the piston rod, right, and it either there's pressurized air on top of this piston rod or below it, forcing the rod to either be here, okay, or here. Okay, each piston rod in either pneumatic can travel uh, two inches. That's just given, you know, the size constraints of it. And you should assume that a piston rod will not be in some intermediary, intermediary uh, position. It will either be all the way out or all the way in. It's either the spring is spring or the air is pushing in this position or the air is pushing it out all the way to here. Right, depending on what type of pneumatic you're going to use. For this video, I'm just going to continue assuming that you're using a double acting cylinder because usually they're considered to be better. Though when possible, I guess you should use a single acting cylinder because they are cheaper. Okay, so that's this. Now we've got to take an important measurement first. Go to the max folder, right? And how this works is there's going to be a pivot for the pneumatic, which is down near the bottom. Okay, and there's going to be a pivot of where this pneumatic attaches onto a said arm. Okay, that we're going to eventually be catting. So, trackpad is sluggish today, jeez. Okay, we can put this in and take a measurement from this circle. Down to this circle. Okay, and we want secondary units in inches because we usually cat in inches. Okay, and we want x, y, z, delta. So we want the green measurement, which is going to be 5.551 inches. Okay, so that's important to know. Now I am editing one of these source files, so I do not want to save when I close it. But sometimes you have to do things like this to some of the source files to take an important measurement. Okay, now with that in mind, I can create the planning sketch for this. Okay, so how a pneumatic works is, basic concept is you have some kind of arm. Okay, you also have some kind of tower. All right, and at the end of this tower, you have the pneumatic going across, which I'm going to represent with construction lines. So I'm turning on construction lines by clicking X. Alternatively, you can click this button here. Okay. Yeah, so we have the tower, the arm, and the pneumatic, okay? And the whole point of the pneumatic is to shift this arm. Now in reality, right, we're, we're simplifying the idea. This arm can be even longer, that's okay. The tower can also be even longer, that's okay. But, but what matters is this dimension here and this dimension here, so we don't draw the extraneous lines. So keep in mind, right, that your whole tower and your whole arm can be longer, but 
what you're trying to figure out is the positions of the pivots, or at least the distances between the different pivots. Okay, so we're trying to figure out the pivot between here would be the pneumatic and the tower, here would be the arm and the tower, and here would be the arm and the pneumatic. Okay, so how do you go about figuring this out? What we're going to do is we're going to actually draw two positions, right? And something like that. Okay, so measure this out. Note some important things are this line here has to be broken up into two different lines. You can't just use one line going across continuously. Okay, why is this? Because we're going to apply some equals constraints. We're going to make the length of these two lines the same because think about it, right? The length between the pivot of the pneumatic uh, and the pivot of the arm in the tower, right? The, th this distance has to be the same even as the arm shifts position, okay? Now the pneumatic though can change in length, okay? And uh, if it isn't already applied, you wanna put in a parallel constraint so that these two lines are in sync, right? And you also wanna put in an equals constraint between this line and this line segment. Why is this? Because we did that important measurement earlier, right? You know this is 5.51 inches. Okay, and we know that this additional line length is going to be two inches because every, uh, at least vex pneumatic, they send by two inches. Okay, and that gives us our two, you know, different line lengths. I think I can make this less confusing by putting it all on the same line. That's the same idea, right? This line and this line are going to be the same length, representing when the piston is drawn all the way in, and it extends by an additional two inches when it goes out all the way. Okay, so you kind of do this, and then you want to figure out your positions of your two arms. Okay, you can do that by dragging around. Sometimes it won't work so well, so then you want to drag a different point, right? And we and let's say in this example we have a box sitting on top of this arm, and we want to be able to lower the arm so that the box can tumble out of the robot. I'm just using some arbitrary example. You have to think about uh, how you're going to move an arm to make the pneumatic work. For your design for what you need it to do right but yeah let's say there's a box on top and we need to lower the arm into yeah say about this position so that the box can tumble out of your robot okay and so now we have some approximate positions different uh, parts of okay we have an approximate like yeah positions of the arm and also an approximate like the tower and so now we're gonna actually put in some dimensions now, assuming that this arm is made out of some kind of C channel, where you could potentially combine this concept with this video with the uh, plate design video and make this arm maybe out of Delrin plastic, but assuming it is using C channel, right? Then this whole, then the distance between the pivot of the arm and tower and arm and, arm and pneumatic have to be some kind of multiple of 0 0.5 inches. Okay, this value is pretty close to. 5.5 inches, so I'm going to put that in. Okay, and the same goes for the tower, assuming the tower is made out of some kind of C channel. So some increment of 0.5 inches is so pretty close to 2.5. Okay, and so you put in these actual dimension values that you can actually use for your arm and for your tower based off, you know, the fact we are constrained to mostly using C channels and other VEX harbor pieces, <laughs> right? And now you can look at this, maybe you don't quite like how the sketch was adjusted to, you know, maybe you say you want to try and see what it looks like when this becomes six inches, okay, so that's the difference. I think in our case though, 5.5 is good because we want the arm to be high enough so that the box is secure in the robot, but it also goes down far enough so that the box can tumble out of the robot, okay. Um, similar changes will apply when you change the height of this tower. Okay, but I think, again, 2.5 inches is what we want here. Okay. And then from here, you actually need to, like, you know, cat out the entire mechanism. All right, so that was just the planning sketch. Um, but now I'm going to create three different components. Structure. I guess structure would represent tower in this case. Okay. Arm and pneumatic. So, for 
for pneumatic, I'm going to insert the double hacking cylinder. Now I'm going to kind of very simplified version here that's not really a fleshed out design, uh, but for your design, you know, you would have to actually add the details and make it actually work. I'm just going to put in some C channels so you can visualize how this might come together. Okay. And so now what I want to do is actually let's put this in a pneumatic, right? And so I complete the pneumatic. And from this point on, you know, if I move the entire thing, I want to rotate it 90 degrees, and it could come later. Okay, in my structure component, I'm going to insert a C channel. Uh, and I think I want the tower face the other way, and I'm going to point to point to the sketch. Since we created this mind sketch, we are able to, uh, you know, use it to our benefit when actually counting this. Sorry, my mouse is. I'm using my trackpad. My trackpad's very glitchy today. Is that that one? No, it's that one. There we go. Okay, so now the tower is in place. And I believe that was a 2.5 inch length. Now that's the distance between holes, right? So you actually have to add a 0.5 inches when uh, making your C channel because the distance between the different holes, but not the actual length of your C channel. Okay, so that's why the, this C channel is three inches long. Okay, and then the arm component. We'll import a different C channel. I'm sure this one can be we'll start off with 90 degrees. Um, here I would actually put a spacer between these two C channels, okay, because you want to have smooth joints. Okay, you don't want metal moving against metal. But I am just gonna speed cap this, okay, just to show you kind of how it all comes together. But just to be clear, you should be putting a spacer here in your actual design. Whether you use a, a screw joint, or you use a screw to create the pivot, or you put in an axle. And if you put in an axle, you want to also put in bearings. Okay, so I can put that here. And the other length was 5.5 inches, but again, you need to add 0.5 inches, because that's not the length of the actual C channel. Okay. And so now I got this. Right. If I actually want to make this accurate, I can go back into the sketch. Okay, draw a sketch line about this distance. Okay, click I, pull up the measure tool. You can use the measure tool to find angles between two lines. Okay, and it's 11.934 inches uh, degrees, but instead of memorizing that, I'm just going to click on it and that copies the clipboard. Okay, and pick sketch, go back here. Okay, so now for the arm, I'm going to move it, okay, and I can set pivot, I click on the set pivot button here in the move tool, okay, click on this dot, it could be any of the four dots in this line, okay, what matters is that from this perspective, it's this dot, okay, I check, I have to click the check mark once I like where my pivot is, because otherwise, if I click here, okay, it, the tool will allow you to further adjust your pivot by moving it or also rotating it. But in this case, I'm happy with where it is. So then I click the check mark. Then I can actually apply movements to that new pivot. Okay, and I want negative of that value I copied. Okay, and so now it lines up with the sketch. Okay, I might want to go back into the sketch, find out the angle between this line and this line, okay, that is 14.2111 inches, so I copy that to clipboard by clicking on it again. Okay, now I'm going to manipulate my pneumatic. And so first things first, I have to rotate it, degrees, and then I'm going to point to point here. Here, perhaps. 
shirtless voice. Okay, and I go back to Primove, set my pivot point. Again, it just needs to be somewhere along this line, looking at it from this perspective that it needs to rotate around. So I can click on this dot, check mark that, click on the scroll wheel, and put this value. Right, if it starts rotating the wrong direction, I just put a negative sign in front, but in this case, it rotated the correct direction. And now we can see from this perspective that everything is once again lined up. Okay, and same thing goes here. You should be putting a spacer between the pneumatic cylinder and the tower so that there is you know, a smoother uh, joint there instead of what I'm doing here. But I'm just trying to show you how this comes together. Okay, then uh, you, know, you have to also put in the joint between these two places. And since they're actually clearly spaced apart, you would definitely have to fill in the space with some kind of spacers, maybe multiple spacers stacked on top of each other. Okay, and so that's how you cat pneumatics in a nutshell.